in this video I'm going to talk about using a file stored in a SharePoint location as your data source for a Power BI visualization. Um, if you've never done this before you, you might quite rightly think that it should just be a case of navigating to the specific file you want or the folder location in SharePoint that you want uh, and choosing the the source and away you go but unfortunately it is slightly more complicated than that and there are a couple of pitfalls which you may encounter um, when you're setting this up for the first time so in this quick video I am going to hopefully um, highlight what some of these pitfalls are so that you can avoid them and show you the the actual steps um, required uh, to do this so without further ado uh, the first thing is you, when doing this for the first time, you might encounter some access issues. So the first thing it's best to do is to go into your data source location, data source settings. And then if you find your SharePoint uh, location, you, these ones are already listed. You might have to, to search for it or, or enter your um, URL. Uh, but if I look at this one, I'm going to edit permissions. You'll see that the credential type is currently anonymous. Um, so that might lead you to some issues. So if you go into edit and change from anonymous to your Microsoft account. And I'm not signed in, so it's prompting me to sign in. It should now pick up my credentials or ask me to enter them again. Now I'm currently signed in. Now this obviously works if you have all the right access to um, your uh, SharePoint location. If you've been set up with access from your main Microsoft account, this should sync it. If not, you'll need to speak to your uh, site administrator and ensure that you have been granted the right level of access. But now that you've done that, if you save and OK that, you'll see it's now changed to use the organizational account. And if I OK that and close that, that should alleviate some um, potential issues if we try to kind of, before we try to connect directly to, to the SharePoint location. Uh, so the next element, yeah, the next element I want to look at is um, how you would use a single file stored in SharePoint as your uh, data source. Now, if we go into the date, get data, um, drop down option in Power BI Desktop, you'll see if you go to more, one of the kind of standard um, options is for uh, SharePoint. If it opens up in just a second, yep, when it opens up, um, we see that SharePoint folder is one of the, the kind of like default um, options here. However, if it's a single file, actually, it's probably more complicated to do the, the folder route than it needs to be. So what I'm going to suggest is if we go back, uh, cancel that for a minute, and just do web as the location. And then what it's possible to do is if we get the uh, location of our source file, the URL of it, um, we can paste that directly in here and that kind of bypasses any need to kind of navigate the folder structure. Um, at, at this stage. So what I'm going to do is look now to get the, the URL and it's quite specific in the format that, require, that is required there. So I'm going to show you step by step how to, to get this and paste it in um, to avoid any potential issues. So I'm going to navigate to um, the location of my source file. So if we, if we move back to SharePoint, um, to the location of the file we're interested in, um, the first thing to note is like there is a number of linkages um, and options within SharePoint uh, for sharing and copying links. They don't all work and um, rather than go through the ones that, that don't work, I'm just going to focus on the, the two methods that do. Uh, the, the one kind of like pointer I would say is don't click on the file itself to open the, an instance within SharePoint itself. Uh, none of the linkage options work readily uh, doing it that way. So the, the two ways that you can do it, um, if we open the dialog box uh, next to the file for, for more information, um, 
I'm going to show you the slightly more long-winded. Uh, if we open, uh, use the open option to, to initialize an instance of Excel, uh, and then go into File and Info, and this one here, Copy Path, not Share, the Copy Path one. Uh, it doesn't appear to do anything, but it will copy the, the URL to the, the, the clipboard. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to paste it into Notepad, just so we can see what it does. Now, if we copy this directly, uh, as is, into um, Power BI uh, and try to use it, it will fail. And it's because of this extra string um, of characters at the end of the URL. So what I'm going to do, just to move, prove that works, if I copy the whole thing into the URL window here under the web connector option, I'll just try it with the, the, the string at the end. Uh, it doesn't like that. It objects to the last part of the string. So if we edit how we did it, and this time still got it there, but if I scroll along to the, the end, just remove these characters. Back to the, it's the end of the file extension, so to the end of XLSX, or whatever the, the file extension would be for the for your source. And if I OK that, it should work. And then the options would be from that point, the same as if you were linking directly to an Excel file. So I'll cancel that just now. So that's the, the kind of like, slightly long-winded but um, effective way of doing it but I'm going to show you a quicker option that I've discovered so same screen um, so I'm bring up the dialog box yeah open the, the, the same the dialog box again and this time you, you can actually go straight to this link um, in the, the window here and just highlight all of that and the only difference there if I copy it into notepad it's exactly the same uh, URL, except the, the, the string of characters at the end um, uh, differs from the one that's that's from um, from the full version of Excel. But the principle is the exact same. You just remove everything after the file extension, and then that would operate the same way. So you can uh, copy and paste that into the the link um, in Power BI, and and that'll that'll effectively be used as a, a source Excel file. So that's just the quickest way of doing it. So uh, using the web option um, is the, the preferred approach for bringing in a, a single file from stored in SharePoint. But occasionally you may need to build, bring in multiple files, um, or the, I mean, you could bring them in one at a time, but the practicalities may be such that you do need to, to, to sort of like bring in multiple files from a SharePoint folder location. So we'll walk through the, the process for that. Um, in this instance, you do need to go to Get Data and then the More option, and then choose the SharePoint folder connector when it appears. Um, just give it a second. There we go. So if we do SharePoint folder and then Connect, Again, it will prompt for a URL. Um, now, this is where it does get a little bit fussy in how it wants to see that URL. If you just sort of like copy and paste straight from um, the, the URL window in, in your SharePoint location, it may not work. So basically, if we navigate to SharePoint, first of all, and find the, the folder location that we back too far so it's this one here the the file that we wanted before was located in this folder so if I go and highlight this URL and give that a go I'll put it in here you're ready you see there's a warning it doesn't all agree with that format um, so we do need to make some adjustment adjustments 
before I'll, I'll accept it. Uh, I wish I could say there was a kind of standard do it like this, it'll be fine. But basically, it is a bit of a messy technique and that you need to go back until you stop seeing those uh, the descriptions around the root folder and take it right back to the Let's get rid of the first one, but it still doesn't like that. It needs to go right back, and you need to remove that uh, the default ASPX. There, it's the warning message has disappeared. So if I now OK that, I'm going to tell you about a nice little gotcha that they've built in here. Now this is taking us back to a level higher than the folder that, that we're located in. Um, but you'll see that the, the combine button is the one that's highlighted, which kind of like obviously leads you to believe that that's, that's what you want, want to click on next to sort of make, to refine your search. Don't is the, the option, is, is the, the, the advice I would give you there. Um, yes, just don't do it. You need to qualify your selection criteria and the way to do that is by transforming the data or using the transform data option so if I click on that and give that a moment to launch the Power Query Editor um, what this is doing sorry I've got some um, additional options highlighted so they're taking away a little bit of a moment to render for me. These aren't relevant at this stage. What I need to do is refine this down um, to look only for the location of the files that I'm interested in. Uh, now how I do that is to look for the folder path column and that that's basically going to list everything that's a, a, a child of the, the folder that we specified at the URL level. Um, so if I go into the drop down there and do a search for something around the, the name of the folder that I know I'm interested in. Um, you could flip back to, to SharePoint to if you don't if you know if you weren't sure of that, but I know that the one that I'm interested in is that. So if I OK that, it should filter down our results to just the four files that are located there. Um, what it lends itself to is loading similar files so say if you had multiple files stored in SharePoint that have the same data in the same format you would potentially benefit from combining them into a single file uh, in Power BI and then working with it that way um, and that's what lends itself here it, it doesn't lend itself to combining files of a different uh, structure so in this case I am going to just highlight the two files that I know are of a similar um, structure in this folder. Um, sorry, <laughs> I which entails selecting them from the list rather than highlighting the rows. Pardon me. So once I've got them, this little symbol up here, combined files, is the the next one that I want to click on. If I then click that pretty tiny little icon that's easily missed but it's kind of like key to the whole um, process give that a second to open up so this is where um, it gets a little bit picky about how you, you do this. So I'm just going to sort of like walk you through in some detail what what should work. Right, so when the this window um, opens, um, ch first thing to note is change that to the first of the two files. Give it a second. And if you then need to sort of like click here to the specific tab within the file, file that you want to combine the data. Now don't click OK at this stage. 
um, repeat this process for each of your other source files. So again, it's this one here, and then like repeat for each of the the input files that you have. Once you've done that, once you've specified the the tab and the file, uh, then you can click OK. Give it a few seconds, it will need to evaluate the data. Um, Power BI will then do some um, logic of its own in the background to combine these files, um, which will take a couple of seconds. So I will uh, resume once. Ah, there we go. Now, these, what it terms as queries um, at the, the top left hand side here, are internally generated by Power BI um, when you when you initiate that combined files feature. So there are applied steps that, that relate to them. Um, however, it's inadvisable unless you're very sure on what you're doing um, to change them because they are kind of like auto-generated by the software itself. Um, so yeah, pre proceed with caution if you, if you try to, to amend them. Um, but other than that, this now acts as a data set um, in the same way that it would um, a single data source in Power Query Editor. So you would um, proceed with uh, doing any of the, the normal steps that you, you would want to do um, to, to import that and, and start building visualizations. So the last topic I want to cover is um, how to repoint um, an existing report which uses uh, a locally saved file to um, one saved in a SharePoint location. So um, if we have a look at this uh, report here, um, we can see that it uses um, two or three different locally saved uh, Excel files. But if I want to repoint one of them, uh, let's say the, the calendar file that we were looking at earlier, um just going to walk you through the steps involved in doing that. Uh, it's quite similar to what we looked at before. I'll click back to SharePoint. So just quickly, the quick, we use the quickest method to get the link to it. I just highlight this as before. And again, you can go into the full version and copy the, the path, but this is, this is just as quick. So if we go back into Power BI, and on the file that we want to replace, if I go into change source and go into advanced. Now, if I copy the path in first, and then similarly to what we went over before, um, the last part of the string is irrelevant and won't actually work, um, so that needs to be removed. Again, back to the, the, the just after the file extension name. Once that's there, you can see, well, there's not much of a, <laughs> you can sort of see that it's the same file name, iOS calendar table, but it's obviously got a bit sort of a good format around it. Once you've got the new one in, um, if you hover, and this actually is quite interesting, you don't see that this option exists until you hover over it, but once you hover, hover over to the side, you'll see this more uh, option appears. So if I click on that for the locally saved version, and just delete it. And now we've got the reference to the new location. If I OK that, then you'll see that this updates now. So the locally saved version is now removed and it's replaced it with the iOS, uh, sorry, with the, the SharePoint version. Um, if I close that, it should then prompt to apply the changes, which it should then do. Hopefully, if you've made sure that the file is exactly the same, um, then it should, hopefully, fingers crossed, not object and uh, repoint the report to the new the SharePoint version, which it has without error. So that's that. So that's quite straightforward, but there's just a couple of little steps in there that you, until you do it for the first time, you, you might not be aware of.